so this diagram which we have taken the previous video so we are continuing with the same diagram and here we discussed about the memory hierarchy now here we are going to in this video we are going to assume some variables and we are trying we'll try to analyze some formulas if we can find out uh, in terms of uh, you know excess times or you can say to find the average excess times etc etc or uh, sometimes some cost etc so uh, here there are a few assumptions which we are going to take assuming this is the ith level then this will be the i plus 1th level of the memory hierarchy this will be the i plus 2th level and so on okay so we are not specifically discuss about the l1 l2 l3 l4 cache so when we are here in this video when i'm going to write l1 that means i'm going to discuss about the first level i'm going to when i'm saying l2 that means i'm going to discuss about the second level when i'm saying l3 that means i'm going to discuss about the third level and so on okay now here we, we are go going to take a few variables for example the first variable is ai which is representing the access times of these levels the second variables the second variable that we will be taking that is the f frequency that means how many times uh, that particular level will be referred that is fi the third variable that will be ta taking is the size that will be represented by si and the fourth variable that we will be taking that will be cost per bit cost per bit which will be presented by ci okay so this is for these levels that is access time frequency size cost per bit now as i told you if you are looking for some data for example this is the cpu and cpu is looking for some data if that data is found at a particular level now that is called as a hit if that data is not found at that particular level that will be called as a miss okay now the purpose of this memory hierarchy uh, is that to bridge the speed mismatch between the fastest processor to the slowest memory at a reasonable cost that we discussed in the previous video now in this video we are going to discuss the, go the goal of the memory hierarchy which is to minimize the average access time of the entire system so you can write down this point the goal of memory hierarchy or hierarchy is to minimize the average access time average access time of the entire memory system of the entire memory system okay and so because since uh, there is maybe some information uh, same information is present at each level so if some information is present in ith level that information may, will also be present in i plus 1th level so if the processor refers to a higher level and we found the data that that is called as hit otherwise it is called as a miss if the processor refers to ith level memory and is found then it is called as a hit otherwise it is called as a miss or the fault okay now there are multiple cases that means the first case is when we have only two level memory system when we have only two level memory system okay so that two level memory system is f you can refer it as for example this is a level one or this is level two so there, there's a two level memory system and 
the processor is looking for some data and there can be a hit or there can be a miss now in that particular case you can refer it like this so it was the case one when we have two level memory system two level memory system so assuming this is representing the processor this is representing the level one and it is representing the level two now if the data is present in the level one then we are going to take the data from the level one and we'll place the data inside the cpu and that will be called as a hit okay <coughs> <coughs> so that will be called as a hit now if that data is not present in the level 1 that means that is only present in level 2 now there are two cases number one either in the default case in the default case you can take the direct data and directly place inside the processor in case of fault okay this is the first case and in the second case that is uh, both of them I'm, I'm discussing about level 2 level memory in the second case when we follow the strict hierarchy when we follow the strict hierarchy you can view it like this so this is representing the level 1 and this is representing the level 2 and this is the processor now if the data is found in the level 1 then that will be called as a hit but if the data is not found in the level 1 then we will take the data from the level 2 we will place the data in the level 1 and then we give the data to the processor so that is in case of fault so what is the difference between these two cases in the first case if the data is present in the level one that will be called as a hit and we can give the data directly to the processor right but if the processor searched in the level one memory and if the data is not present in the level one memory then we'll go to the level two memory and directly place uh, take the data from the level 2 to the processor okay in the second case the same case arised but the, uh, the only difference is when there is a miss in the level 1 then from the level 2 we will copy the data to the level 1 and then from the level 1 we will copy the data to the processor okay now assuming some assumptions for level 1 assuming that the time to access the level 1 is t1 so you can write it clearly here assuming that the time to access the level 1 is t1 and here the hit ratio is assuming h1 okay and the time taken to access the level 2 is t2 okay then if i am discussing about the t average what is the average time taken then it will be h1 multiplied by t1 that means h1 percentage of time the data is available in the level 1 multiplied by time taken to access the data from the level 1 plus if the data is not present in the level 1 that is the probability is 1 minus h1 the probability will be 1 minus h1 multiplied by the time taken to access the level 2 memory system okay in the same way for case 2 if the time taken to access the level 1 is t1 and the hit ratio is h1 and the time taken to access the level 2 is t2 in that case the average time t average will be equal to h1 multiplied by t1 plus 1 minus h1 which is representing there is a miss then in that case first of all we have to take the data from t2 then copy the data into t1 and we have to access the data from the t1 so that is t1 plus 
52 that is a t average okay and the second thing is we need to find what is the average cost or you can say z average per bit what is the cost per bit of data that is a cost per bit right so in the previous case also i told you that we have ci ci will be representing what is the cost per bit and si will be representing what is the size of that memory so here assuming that uh, in these levels assuming that for level 1 if the cost per bit is c1 and the size is s1 for level 2 cost per bit is c2 and the size is s2 now the c average that is average cost per bit will be c1 s1 plus c2 s2 divide by s1 plus s2 okay that means the total cost of level 1 plus the total cost of level 2 divided by the total size so it is total cost divided by total size okay in the same way for the second case assuming that the uh, size of level 1 is s1 and the cost for level 1 is c1 in the same way size of level 2 is s2 and the cost of level 2 is c2 then the average cost per bit will be equal to c1 s1 plus c2 s2 divide by s1 plus s2 divide by s1 plus s2 so in this case we have taken an example of level 1 and level 2 memory okay so in the next video let us discuss about okay so let's not take the next video so in, within this video let us discuss about the three level memory system where we'll be having three levels okay so it is three level memory system three level memory system so the case one that is the default case which is the default case and what is this default case is assuming that we are having uh, the processor uh, it is representing the processor now we are having the level 1 assuming it is representing the level 1 we are having the level 2 memory and we are having the level 3 memory okay now in the default case if the data is present in the level 1 then that will be called as a hit now if the data is not present in the level 1 then we look at the level 2 and if the data is present in the level 2 then directly we can access it but if again if there is a fault in level 2 that means data is not even present in the level 2 then we'll access the data from the level 3 and then we are going to access it okay now in this case assuming that the time taken to access the level 1 is t1 and the cost uh, is c1 size is s1 and hit ratio is h1 and the time taken to access the level 2 is t2 cost is c2 size is h s2 and uh, hit ratio is h2 level 3 time taken is t3 cost is c3 and size is s3 now for this particular case if i ask what is the t average then t average will be h1 multiplied by t1 plus 1 minus h1 multiplied by t2 multiplied by h2 plus 1 minus h1 into 1 minus h2 multiplied by t3 that means what is the probability of getting the data in t1 uh, that is in level 1 so time take us taken to access the level 1 will be t1 then if the data is not present in the level 1 then the probability is 1 minus h1 then for that particular case the time taken to access the t2 level is uh, this level l2 level is t2 but the hit ratio is h2 that means this is the probability that we can get the data in the l2 level and if the data is not present in both the l1 and l2 level then the time taken to ex access the last level is t3 and here the cost per bit that c average that is the cost per bit will be calculated as c1 s1 plus c2 s2 plus 
C3 S3 divide by S1 plus S2 plus S3 that means total cost divided by uh, size total size okay and the case 2 can be when we use the strict hierarchy strict hierarchy so strict hierarchy will be that uh, if the data is present in the level 1 then CPU can take the data from the level 1 or processor can take the data as level 1 if the data is not present in the level 1 then first of all we copy the data from level 2 to level 1 and from level 1 to the processor now if the data is not even present in the level 2 that means it, it if it is present in the level 3 then we copy the data from level 3 to level 2 from level 2 to level 1 and from level 1 to the processor so again the same data same these this uh, uh, notations are ap ap applied here then the t average here will be calculated as h1 multiplied by t1 plus 1 minus h1 into h2 multiplied by t2 plus uh, t2 plus t1 t2 plus t1 plus 1 minus h1 into 1 minus h2 into t1 plus t2 plus t3 that is the here you can see this will be the time this will be the time taken to copy the data okay and from then accessing it and the cost per bit will remain the same so c average per bit will remain the same that means it will be c1 s1 plus c2 s2 plus c3 s3 divide by s1 plus s2 plus s3 that means the total cost multiplied by the total size okay so here after this we'll take some examples of the previous questions but again this uh, topic which i covered in level one and level two that is still a very basic understanding of these uh, two three this accessing that is multiple levels if multiple levels of memory is available uh, but still there are multiple ways of copying the data that is right through and right back that we will be discussing in the later videos but right now it is just an introduction to how the data can be copied and how the data can be accessed okay so uh, we'll take some uh, simple simple uh, member data and then we'll try to solve the questions based on that